Welcome to My First Boat. In this channel, we will show you the step-by-step -step restoration of our 40-foot vintage steel yacht, with the goal to someday living on it full-time. Welcome to week 22. Let's jump right in because we have a lot to cover. We'll start by finishing up that rusty air vent where we cut out a large piece last week. First, I make a template out of cardboard and cut the piece from a 3mm thick steel plate. To make sure the part fits perfectly, we have to bend it a little in addition to the usual trimming and precision fitting. Because this was a bulky and heavy piece, my friend came over to help me along. Once the piece fits perfectly, it's time to weld it in place. For this we first use the MIG welder to make a few fixing points and then we finished up with the stick welder. A quick go with the angle grinder to clean up the welds. A little bit of paint and there you have it. Next let's put in place the new hatches. This is a size 10 Lumer hatch which is quite a bit smaller than the existing hole so we need to weld in some steel to make it fit. I was able to cut out all the parts I needed from the leftover of the 3mm thick steel plate which we used in the beginning. After making sure the part fits perfectly, I weld it in place. Here again I use the MIG welder. And I'm happy to report that I managed to improve the results I get with the MIG welder. What did the trick in the end was to reduce my traveling speed so that the weld has more time to expand. Next let's cut and fit the second big piece we need for this. Once again I trace the outlines of the needed shape directly onto the piece. And then cut it out and trim until it fits perfectly. At this point I ran out of wire for the MIG welder so I had to go back to the stick welder. I implemented some changes to my technique and the settings on the welder according to all the numerous comments I got from you guys and see there I managed to get much better welds than ever before. The trick here was to increase the amperage on the welding machine. Finally I put in the three little corner pieces. The only thing left to do now is to close the welds from underneath, clean everything up with the angle grinder and then this is also done. We are now back in the aft cabin where last week we put in the first floorboards. Well, the next batch has arrived and at this point I want to express a huge thanks to Plattensuschnitt24.de for providing these pre-cut resin coated plywood plates. If you enjoy these videos, then you should send them some love, because they helped us greatly moving this project forward. If you're in Germany, definitely do check out their online shop. Alright, next let me show you in 30 seconds how I put in the remaining floor panels. Alright, so all the floorboards have been cut and put in place. No, 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 wait, not yet. Because we still have to cut and trim the remaining narrow wooden beams and make sure all the boards are level 
you can see right now there's like this en entire area here is is higher because the angle profiles underneath they are bent and so we need to work on that and to do that we first gonna have to remove all the boards again so let's do that right now here you can see how much these angle profiles are bent in some places and here's what I came up with to compensate for that first I trace the area that is bent onto the narrow wooden beams I then use the angle grinder with a sandpaper disc to cut some kind of a slope running alongside the beams. Here you can see the different layers of the plywood appearing progressively as I sand away more and more material from the wooden beams. And there you go! At first sight this seems about right, so let's do the other beams that need processing and then we can put the boards back and see what we got. Well, what we got is that even after trimming the wooden beams, this board here in the middle still has a lot of play in it, but I found out that it's because the board itself has bent, probably due to the humidity coming from those ballast below. So I'm gonna have to wait until I can screw this in place. Anyway, moving on to the forward cabin again. Here we have a size 40 Lumar hatch, for which I cut the hole in the ceiling last week. And this is actually the first test fitting I did. And see there, it fits perfectly right off the bat. The only problem is that the roof is slightly arched and the hatch is flat. So we need to build some kind of frame to compensate for that. And before we continue, I have to put in a little disclaimer here. The solution I came up with is my own personal solution. It was not recommended to me by anyone else and I do not attempt to teach anyone how to do this. Some people may not agree with my methods and that's fine. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. And for now, let's see what I came up with. I start by cutting two thin strips of metal, which I then trim to fit the shape of the frame of the hatch. Next I remove all the old paint around the border of the hole I cut. Put the pieces in place and the hatch on top to see if it fits. I guess by now you can see where this is going. Now it's hard to show you this on camera, but the gap on each side of the hatch is gone and the hatch is now rock steady. Next I mark the optimal position of the pieces so that when I remove them I can put them back in the ideal place. I then wipe everything down with acetone to prepare the surfaces for the next step. Which is to fix the metal pieces in place with special adhesive. I use Sikaflex 552 which is resistant to aging and weathering and remains flexible even after curing completely. A positive side effect of this is that it will fill up the areas between the roof and the new metal pieces I'm adding to avoid the formation of a cavity where condensation could form and thus lead to corrosion. Alright, so far so good. After letting this cure for a day, I come back and clean it up with this little steel brush and wipe away the rest with acetone. Another test fitting before we move on to the next step. Here you can see very well how the gap is completely filled by those new metal pieces and the hatch is now sitting down completely flat on those two sides. I surround the hatch in appropriate distance with some tape. And then I mix up a first batch of two component glass fiber filler paste. I then apply the glass fiber paste onto the working area and try to mold it as good as possible to the final shape I want, as long as it's still moldable. 
And to do this you have to be really fast. From the moment you mix in the curating agent to the filler paste, you have about 5 to 10 minutes where the material is easy to work with. To get everything done I had to mix up 3 separate batches, which gave me sufficient time to mold everything carefully. And of course at first this always looks like a complete mess, which is why we put down this tape in the beginning. After about an hour or two, the material was completely hardened. To start, I use this sandpaper sponge, because like this I can get a better feeling for the material than if I use a power tool right away. But then eventually I move on to the power sander. After a first round of sanding, I remove the tape surrounding the hatch and clean up the borders with a knife. And then I clean up everything again with the power tool. There you go, the shape is 95% there. The rest is just gonna be some more fine adjustments. But before we do that, of course, we have to drill the holes for the hatch first. And here too, I'm happy to report that I made some big progress. I managed to drill all the holes with only two drills, a small one and a big one. Once again, thanks to the feedback from you guys. The particular difficulty here was that we had to cut through two layers of steel. Alright, now moving on to the fine adjustments. For this we use non-glass fiber but also two component filler paste. And after sanding this down, we can enjoy the 99% finished frame for the new hatch. At this point there are only minor gaps of less than 1mm, which I might address later on, but I'm pretty sure the sealant can tackle those. Right now, just to finish this up for the day and to better see the result, I put down a layer of primer. Once again, this is not the finished result, there are still some areas to work on, but I think for now the result is pretty good and I personally am very happy with it so far. Right now let's do the same thing with the smaller hatch and we're gonna run a bit faster through this since the steps are basically the same as with the bigger hatch. First up is drilling the holes. Now let's have a look how flat the hatch is sitting. And we can see here on one of the corners there's a larger gap which we will have to address. Here too we repeat the same process with the glass fiber filler paste. Sanding everything down.
double checking how it sits after we put in the glass fiber paste, making some fine adjustments with a more fine filler paste, and there you have it. In this shot the paint is actually still wet, because I was a bit in a rush and I had to leave. Alright, for our last update this week we are back in the aft cabin, where first I remove all the floorboards, I vacuum the entire bilge, to get everything ready for painting, again. But rest assured, this is the last time I'm gonna harass you with painting the aft cabin, at least for this season. And with that, I'm signing off. Thank you all for watching and see you again next week.